So I'm going to be talking about design for flexibility in the modern office. There have been many research studies and reports on how employees work, how to keep them happy and healthy, and what influences productivity in the modern office. Employees represent 90% of a company's cost, compared to approximately 6% for their facilities. Therefore, the design of effective office space is critical for a company's bottom line and competitiveness. In the emerging information inf and innovation economy, the fundamental nature of office work is rapidly evolving due to technology. The prevalence of Wi-Fi, sharing networks, and the cloud allow for spatial flexibility and eliminate the need to work at a specific desk. This creates the ability to work anywhere inside or outside the office, individually or collectively. At the same time, companies are starting to bring their employees back to the office, as Sean was mentioning in the last talk. Collaboration is also becoming a more prevalent work model, so workspaces must be flexible to accommodate different ways of working individually and in teams. Reports suggest that employees average 45% of their time working away from their desks. Therefore, the quality of other workspaces is equally important. A report published by Oxford Properties Group reveals that in Canada, concentrated independent work averages around 58%, compared to 27% collaborative, 8% social, and 7% learning. The old standard was private offices and cubicles, which created a type of hierarchy. In the 1990s, the return to the fully open office space has proven to be unsuccessful due to the level of noise and distraction, resulting in decreased productivity. Reports conclude that the most productive and profitable companies are ones that offer employees a variety of different spaces for focused and collaborative work. I'm going to share with you briefly three of our office projects that exemplify flexibility through design and a balance between focus and collaborative workspaces. The first one is the Canadian headquarters of TravelZoo, a global internet media company specializing in travel and entertainment packages. To reinforce their company culture, TravelZoo encourages their employees to experience for themselves the travel de deals that they offer customers. We were tasked with creating a new workspace that would capture the spirit of the company's culture and brand. So we took inspiration from travel and leisure destinations. In the entrance area, an interactive world map designed as a wood pegboard has colored pegs for employees to indicate all the places they have traveled. The reception area is inspired by a terrace or a patio and offers an additional space for informal team meetings. The main boardroom beyond and kitchen space allude to modes and nodes of high-speed transport, such as trains, airports, and stations, with sleek surfaces and curved walls. There are a number of playful branding elements. Uh, the kitchen has an arrivals and departures wall graphic to track the ongoing travel of employees. Open workstations are located next to the windows with breakout rooms nearby for smaller team meetings. Good acoustics is a critical but often overlooked element of the modern office. We use perforated metal panels in a T-bar ceiling to diffuse the light fixtures above, but also to control the acoustics in the open workspaces. Travel Zoo's brand colors, red and blue, were used to define different zones. Red for action and blue for tranquility. The creative team, writers and producers, are located in the blue zone. And the, while well, the sales department around the corner is in the red zone. The World Green Building Council's report on workspaces emphasizes that access to natural light and views have a profound impact on employee well-being. So we located all the meeting rooms and communal spaces on the interior of the office with workstations located at the exterior windows. Breakout spaces, which they call huddle rooms, are designed as a cabin concept. These are for smaller group meetings and utilize pops of bold color to define rooms in, with differing character. Telephone booths are used for very focused work or sales calls as well as a place to make personal calls so that the open workspaces are reserved for more quiet work. A casual uh, meeting space or workspace designed as a park concept rounds out the variety of workspaces, taking advantage of what would be an awkward curved corner with a stunning view. This is the Toronto office for Slack, a team communication app for business and the world's fastest growing tech company based in San Francisco. After just a few years, the company has already opened offices around the globe. 
including Vancouver, Melbourne, London, Dublin, and New York. Each of their offices occupy a former industrial building with interiors that honor the property's legacy and renew its productivity. Their Toronto office is located in an old knitting mill and occupies three floors of this old brick and beam building. In the reception area, we worked with Catherine Walter of Felt Studio, wrapping diagonal strips of industrial felt along the walls and ceiling. This has an amazing acoustic effect and creates a warm and inviting area upon entering the office. For this project, we drew from a concept of threads of communication using linear, linear geometries throughout the space, such as continuous angular light fixtures and colored networking cables running through the length of the office on the ceiling and the walls. These are an homage to the lines of yarn of the of the, uh, that were used in the mechanized knitting process, while also referencing the messaging application itself. The workstations are located at the perimeter and the central core houses service areas such as washrooms, kitchenettes, uh, server rooms, etc. Sections are cut out of the core to form banquettes and small work areas. Meeting rooms and lounge spaces are located at the end, ends of the open spaces. This is the main boardroom with the angular light fixture that appears to thread through the ceiling, knitting workspaces and uh, meeting rooms together. Shapes, textures and colors have an impact on employees' sense of well-being and help in carrying out certain tasks. Apparently, angular design and pointed forms tend to subconsciously support alertness. This is one of the smaller meeting rooms. The colorful network uh, of cables are threaded through the workspaces along the ceiling and across walls as playful accents. There is a large cafe which functions as an employee lunchroom and space for all hands, meetings, and presentations. The linearity is carried throughout the space in the wood cladding of the cafe. The main lounge doubles as a different type of workspace for larger, more, ca more casual brainstorming meetings. A pegboard wall offers an element of fun and engagement. These playful branding elements were carried throughout the office. Another pegboard off the elevator showcases the, the company's slogan. In the spirit of designing the future of work, I'm going to end with a modular office concept that we designed called a pop-up office. It responds to the profound shift in the way we work. When all we need is a surface to work on and a place to plug in, the working environment is no longer static. The pop-up office distills the key elements of the modern office, mobility, adaptability, and flexibility. Separate modules collectively form a workspace for both individual work and collaboration. There is um, a place to work, a collaborative space, a lounge area, and a refueling station. The modules are each comprised of separate planes, floor, wall, and ceiling, and furniture elements that can be assembled in different configurations. The pop-up office is constructed of reclaimed shipping pallets and their frames. This is a found material, and technically it's a waste product. Just in the United States alone, approximately 200 million wood pallets are thrown into landfills each year. So we did a calculation to see how many wood pallets we would need for one pop-up office designed to fit in a standard 8-foot by 20-foot shipping container, which is approximately 50 pallets. There are different components which were pre-built and shipped as units. The modules cr were constructed in advance and assembled on site without any fasteners. The wall slots into the floor, the ceiling bearers on the wall and clips into the container's front edge. The modular elements connect and rely on each other for support. The pop-up office is easily transported, reconfigurable and rapidly deployed. It's designed for short-term use and atypical applications such as outdoor festivals, disaster relief situations, or startups looking for modest office space. Temporary office spaces can be deployed and plugged in for immediate use. These are the modules installed in the shipping container. The rough pallet boards are sanded on walls and horizontal surfaces where they come in contact with people and left rough on the floor and the ceiling. This is an uh, adjustable louvered slat over the, um, um, over the boardroom table uh, for an adjustable light fixture. And there's wood shelves and ledges that uh, slot into gaps in the wall elements. The back-to-back -back lounge chairs are very popular. They're very comfortable and people seem to really uh, love the curves. They're always coming up to feel them. So the pop-up office was installed at the Interior Design Show and has since been used in an exhibition at Ryerson University and it now resides at the 401 Richmond Building 
where it's being used literally as a pop-up office every day. There are people who use it for meetings, interviews, off-site work, lunch breaks, games, and uh, personal phone calls are just lounging. And it's wonderful that uh, a material that was previously considered a waste product has a new life and is being used every day. Thank you.